Hello and welcome to the streaming and sharing session. Um, we have a couple great papers uh, for you today. First, we have Zhikong Lu Caleb, who will be talking to us about uh, You Watch, You Give, You Engage, a study of live streaming practices in China. Okay, thank you for introducing. So I'm Zhikong Lu from the University of Toronto. Today I'm here to present our work on live streaming in China. Live streaming is gaining traction in recent years worldwide. As a Chinese live streaming user, when reading previous work about live streaming and occasionally watching live streams on Periscope, YouTube Live, or Twitch, I was surprised that there, were, there are a lot of differences between live streams in China and those in the North America. Today, I am presenting this work to inform our community about what we learned from studying live streaming in China and to inform the design of future live streaming applications. The design of UI of Chinese live streaming apps is much more complicated. For example, the notifications of virtual gifts sent by the viewers are extremely eye-catching, as shown on the uh, screenshot here. And when viewed in landscape mode, comments are shown in the form of damaku, which is text overlaying and floating on the video, and it is super popular in East Asia. And moreover, streamer has become a new profession in China. They are supported and trained by a lot of companies, and they go live almost every day. Live streaming acts as a primary source of income for them. And in 2017, there were about 200 different live streaming apps in China, and the top nine popular platforms all have over two million daily active users. And over half of the internet users in China are using live streaming apps. Although a few research projects have focused on understanding the live streaming phenomenon, they have been largely confined to understanding European or North American usage. For example, Twitch, Facebook Live, Periscope, and YouNow. It is surprising that few research has explored live streaming phenomenon in China, since it has so many active users. So I, as an HCI researcher, I'm interested in why so many people are watching live streams in China. And inspired by previous work we cited, we asked the following questions. What are the practices and motivations for watching? What type of interactions between viewers and streamers take place in China? And what mechanisms exist to reward streamers in China? What are the factors contributing to a viewer's engagement while watching live streams? And we used a mixed method study, which is consi consisted of an online survey of 527 live streaming users and semi-structured interviews with 14 active users. For more details, please refer to our paper. So what are the practices and motivations for watching and conducting live streams in China? Respondents reported that they spent on average 7.2 hours per week watching live streams, which is comparable to the users of Netflix spent on watching videos on Netflix per week. And they also reported that they spent about 62 minutes uh, watching a single live stream. And compared to the average video length on YouTube, which is four minutes and 20 seconds, we, s we can see that watching live streams is kind of a different behavior than watching videos on, live, uh, on YouTube. And respond respondents also reported they used four platforms on average regularly, which is different from previous research in North America, where most users use just one or two platforms. And 93% of users used mobile phones to watch live streams. And different platforms were used for different content or streamers, since some streamers are signed by different platforms. As for motivations, 69% reported they watched for relaxing. And surprisingly, 
over half of them reported that they were attracted by certain streamer, which indicated that streamers has a very strong influence on the watching behavior. Other motivations include killing time, information needs, and social needs. Here is an example about um, the social needs. They watch live streams for seeking out experiences that were different from their own social life. For example, we seldom have parties in China. Sometimes I really want to escape from my close tie or the circle of my fellows, and live streaming provides a perfect place for that. So what content are people watching? This, these are the re responses to the question in our survey about types of live streams people enjoyed watching the most. We can see that it covers diverse topics, including personal experience sharing, traveling, performance, gaming, and knowledge sharing. And we further analyzed stories told by our survey respondents and highlight some of our findings here. So the most reported stories, uh, the most reported topics in our stories were about sharing life experience. They are typically about uh, non-celebrity sharing real life story or personal experiences in a talking head way. And conversations sometimes centered around like serious topics. For example, dealing with pressure from work, work-life balance, career, dealing with relationships, and marriage. And this story provided some motivations for watching this. For example, gaining social support without disclosing too much information. It's really beneficial to have interactions with streamers and viewers. I can release the pressure from my daily life, my work, my family, children, parents, and high pace of life of modern society. So with much pressure in life, this viewer hopes to gain social support from streamers and the community that are not close tied. And also sharing life experience. This example shows that live streaming enables people to discuss these types of topics that may be hard to discuss with others in real life. In this case, about independence and equality in marriage which may not be acceptable, acceptable to be discussed by females in some of Chinese traditional values. The second most reported topic was about showroom performance, which is about amateur or semi-professional performances. This is an example of singing where the streamer shows lyrics directly in the video. And it is not just about singing, dancing, magic tricks, music instruments, xiangsheng, which is Chinese crosstalk, and ventriloquism can also be seen. And re the viewers reported that quality, taste, and stories behind the performance are really important. And live streams even create art forms for mainstream culture, like Han Mai, a form of rapping in China was originated from live streaming. And this story shown here uh, highlight that the streamer rewarded the viewer by writing a hanmai and performing it live, which highlights the improvisational nature of, the, of such art form. And the third most reported topic was knowledge sharing, in this case, like history and Chinese calligraphy. and also uh, showcasing some artwork, like the perform performative artwork, kind of. And streamers provide a weekly series of streams on certain topics, which covers formal knowledge and informal knowledge. And they shared this knowledge in a relaxing, entertaining, and conversational style. This, this highlights, like, Viewers really enjoy watching the cooking process, like uh, they even cook along with the streamer. And they would like to be able to customize practices of knowledge, for example, Chinese medicine. And they can learn from other viewers since they are asking questions and the streamers answered them. 
And for video games, since uh, there have been already a lot of studies, we just highlight some interesting findings. For example, video game streamers may also stream other activities regularly, such as singing performances or outdoor activities, to raise the viewer's engagement and reduce chances for boredom. And this one, although it's about a game streamer, it shows the strong tie in the community and potential social impact live streaming may have, since it showcases like a fan wanted to volunteer in a charity school which the streamer has donated to. And that school was in less developed region and doesn't provide decent pay, but still the fans would like to volunteer. And the fifth most reported topic was outdoor and traveling. People really enjoy watching surviving in the wild, adventures, hunting, hiking, or climbing mountains. And they enjoyed the thrilling feeling and the novelty of the streams. And they also used these streams to even l learn outdoor skills, like this one, they, they would like to learn downhill climbing. And also use this as lens to view society from the streamer's perspective. Another interesting uh, finding was about e-commerce, where streamers are selling goods using the live streams. And they are mainly on Taobao, which is China's most uh, biggest e-commerce website. And viewers seem to trust other viewers since they, uh, as long as they don't seem to be a show. There are also other interesting content which can be found in the paper, like gorging on food. So what interactions uh, between viewers and streamers take place? What we found was about fan groups. So uh, this one showcased like uh, viewers joining a private chat group uh, of the streamers, um, mainly on QQ and WeChat, which are uh, instant messaging apps. And this, uh, this streamer showed the information of this group directly in the video to attract viewers to join these chat groups. And how, how are viewers reward the streamers? So viewers can purchase virtual gifts from the UI directly. For example, here, the first one, which looks like a rocket, costs about $300. And the streamer will get a portion of the value of these gifts. Surprisingly, over 66% respondents reported having paid for virtual gifts. And over half of them even have rewarded streamers through other external channels, such as WeChat or Alipay, which is kind of PayPal. And this story told us, like, I have ordered food online late at night for my favorite streamer who was working hard on her streams. So uh, I will just highlight gifting as channels supporting social dialogues, currency of social capital, a way to keep faith and can be an impulse purchase. For engagement, what we found from the stories was that streamers' pers personality and skills are the most important. Like most of the stories told uh, was about the streamers' personality and skills highlighted here, and also novelty, atmosphere, and authenticity of the streams. And we also did a factor analysis, but more details can be found in the paper. So uh, some discussions. Streams about politics or civil content are rare in China. And even there are a few, they are more about banter. And uh, we conjecture that uh, censorship and regulations may have dampening effects. However, some viewers perceived that censorship um, act as positive forces to reduce undesirable and negative content. And people also use live streaming to achieve a harmonious ambience of social life. They use live streaming for more pleasure, more chances for socializing with others, and a feeling of being trusted and accompanied by others. 
and also for Guanxi, which is the ties between individuals fostered through exchanges of favor. Sending gifts, uh, sending virtual gifts are used to circulate Guanxi and keep faith. For example, a uh, leaderboard of top gift senders makes the gift senders feel like uh, gaining faith. And uh, we recommend some de design applications that may be generalizable to other culture as well. For example, different ways of engaging with live streaming community. So fan groups and the uh, gift sending are different levels of engagement, which are not pre uh, previously reported in a lot of work. And viewers desire deeper and richer interactions. However, there are challenges like how to make like different multimodal interactions less intrusive and interruptive during live video and even controlling trolls in new modality. And also we highlight like live streaming has penetrated other services such as e-commerce and online education and how to support the unique challenges of these diverse experiences while still maintaining a sense of community, reward and authenticity is challenging. Lastly, we can leverage live streaming for social good. For example, some streamers use live streaming to showcase traditional cultural art forms and artifacts. And knowledge sharing streams are also beginning to attract older adults to watch and engage in live streams. It is challenging to make live streaming more accessible to a broader audience. That is all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Hi. Sorry, I missed the first uh, oh. bit of the talk, so I hope I'm not the <laughs> question you already covered. Um, I found it really, uh, I'm Corey Ankpen from Microsoft Research. Yeah. Um, the, the results at the end that show the different things people want to do um, watching a live streaming, given your research, do you think that we should support that in terms of I just, I want to identify as a passive user or I want to identify as a, as a fan and be able to, to have more engagement um, or should there just be one way and it supports all of those types of um, methods of engagement? Well, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think really what we need would be more customizable things like actually the 14 viewers I interviewed actually they have diverse levels of engagement like some just passively watch or even just listen to the sound the voice but others really they kind of even join the VIP group of the streamers and they off they have a lot of offline interactions uh, going on so I think we should definitely think about it as kind of a ecosystem which supports like new generations of net celebrity kind of that yeah, so it's, it's definitely not a one solution to solve all, maybe. Yeah, that's my opinion. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? If not, I have a second. Sure. sure. <laughs> um, because we've looked at live streaming in, in North America, yeah. and I know that you, you live in Canada, do you, or are you in China? Uh, yeah, uh, I came from China. You came so. from China. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you, th what, what, do you have a sense of what the biggest difference is between live streaming that's happening in China versus the way live streaming has been adopted and is being used in North America? Um, the most different thing? Um, I think probably like the, the gifting thing is really a very important thing and it's kind of deeply rooted from some cultural thing like Guanxi and keeping faith and also I think also, a lot of companies, they are sponsoring and training the streamers, which also help, like they can do marketing for the streamers, mm -hmm. uh, like advertisement, or they even uh, do some like propag propagation or some carnivals, kind of streamers carnivals. So they, they really help the proliferation.